Welcome to Burning Questions, where the wings are hot and the questions are hotter. I'm Levi Adams, and today with me we have... Hi, I'm Dr. Storsley, Superintendent of Grays Lake 127. All right, without further ado, let's get into this. All right. So we're just going to start. We're just going to go. We're going to start. We're just going to go. Start. All right, here we go. Let's do it. Ding. Not feeling it yet, but okay. Yes. Yeah. So, um, what exactly is your role here at the school? Well, sorry. So, um, I'm the superintendent, and most people don't know what that is. But um, without getting like too in the weeds, the way that um, schools are structured in Illinois, we have a school board, right? So, there are seven members of the school board, they're elected. They actually, uh, you know, provide the direction for the district based on, you know, the needs of the community and the wants of the community. They're supposed to speak for the community what, um, what direction they want the schools to go. School board hires one person. That's me. Okay. I then am in charge of, are responsible for everything else, sort of enacting all the board policies, curriculum, um, student services, facilities, all of that. All of that is under me. Obviously, we have many, many people who are working on that and are experts in those fields, but I oversee all of that. That's kind of the Cliff Notes version of what I do. All okay. right. On to the next wing. All right. Oh, wait, this is the seventh Reaper. Yep. All right. There we go. Okay. Yep. That will bite to it. Yep. So we get a lot of emails from you from yes. time to time. Aren't you lucky? I am very lucky. <laughs> so what makes those so important? Well, okay. So when I send an email out, usually I don't do that all that often, at least to students for sure. Um, to staff a little bit more, but I tend, I try not to just be blasting out emails. Um, so if I'm sending something out to students or the community or all of staff, it's something that um, for whatever reason, it makes sense for me to send. So for example, you got a lot of emails from me about COVID, right? Mask policies, what we're doing with masking and vaccinations and all of that sort of fun stuff. Um, Typically, that would come from me because I wanted it to be like kind of one point of contact. Who, you know, when we're talking about mass policies and things like that, people needed to respond to it. You can respond to me, right? Basically, it all came through me. It made it a lot easier, a lot simpler um, to have one point of contact for a really kind of complex thing. More typically, you're probably getting emails like from teachers and assistant principals and Dr. Roscoe and things like that. Um, but when I'm sending something out, I try to leave it as like, this is something that's important. I really need you guys to pay attention to because I don't send things out all that often, I hope. Um, so I'm hoping that when I send it, like, you'll, oh, okay. The superintendent sends something that might be something important. Does that make sense? Or? Yep. Okay. And then on the wing number three. All right, hold on. I'm like, yeah, I'm not fast. And this one is Dave's Insanity Sauce. Yep. All right. Working up the ladder here. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. All right. That's got a little kick. Just right. give it a second. No good. Oh, tang to it. All right. So what is your favorite thing to do around the school and around the district? Oh, wow. Um, really, my favorite thing to do is to be around students. Um, one of the things that's kind of tricky about school administration, like a lot of people who are administrators, most people who are administrators, got into education because we were teachers. 
right? We love being around students. We love interacting with students and, and doing all that. Once you start to get to different administrative positions, you get further and further away from students, right? Yep. So there are some districts where the superintendent is, isn't even in the buildings, right? Their admin, uh, their district office, where my office would be, is like somewhere not even in a school. Is what it is, but I would hate that. My office right now is at least attached to Central. So if I'm having like a day, and we were talking earlier, like, yeah, I love to do Excel spreadsheets. Actually, I do. But um, sometimes, like, I have to get out of my office and just be around students, right? Um, I actually don't have an office at Grays Lake North, so my favorite place to hang out is right here at the Hub. It is awesome. I can just plot my computer down. I've got Wi-Fi access. I can get all my work done and just be around students. Um, that, that's really the most fun for me, for sure. All right. All right. Hold on. All right. Ready to hit it. Next one. The Psycho Hot Sauce. Ready? I would say my favorite thing about working with students is um, just honestly being around what is going on in these campuses. Um, yeah. I'll say this, and I hope you take it the right way. Like, students are crazy, but in the best possible way. They're so much fun to be around and just learn from. Um, so I get to go around and just, you know, watch students doing great things and kind of just pop in and see what's happening and talk to students about what they're doing, whether it's 3D printing or, you know, uh, building a podcast and publishing a podcast or whatever it is. It's a theater thing or something like that. Um, I just love seeing students show what they know and show their passions um, that really is that's why I think most of us get into education and it's you know I've been doing this for you know over 20 years um, that never gets old that's really the fun part of this job for sure all right on cool. the last one last one all right here we go Pretty good. Hmm. Yeah. So around the school, there is a, a big focus around mental health, I feel. Why do you feel like that is important? Wow, I think uh, that's a great question. Um, I, I think, and I, I'm sure you have noticed, there's been much more of a yeah, focus on mental health um, and people being mindful of their own mental health, right? And I'll, I'll speak for educators, and we'll talk about students a little bit. Um, educators, your teachers, your paraprofessionals, your administrators, any of the adults in this building, the reason we get into this is because we love students. Um, but we know teaching is a hard job, it just is, right? Um, and I think the type of people sometimes that go into education, we just, we will work and work and work and we'll run ourselves into the ground without asking for help, right? Um, for whatever reason, because we just, we wanna get the job done, we wanna make sure students are learning, we wanna make sure they have, you know, students have everything that they need. Um, so at times, adults who work in schools don't always focus on their own health, right? And I think the pandemic really, if there's one good thing that came out of it, I think is the focus on, wait a minute, we really gotta focus on our own mental health. And again, I'm speaking for adults right now. Um, so what I've seen, People being much more open about that, um, being much more honest about that, and you know, it's okay to say I'm not okay, right? It's okay to um, to ask for help and go to something. And I guess you know, really, I would extend that to students as well. Um, and I think we, again, as adults, trying to make it okay for students um, to advocate for their own mental health, right? And making sure we have the resources that you need as students and ourselves as adults. Again. We're all, we're all human beings, right? We're all kind of going through this, this rough time together. Um, so we, again, we as adults want to make sure we are providing you with resources. We are providing students with, uh, I guess, the permission to say, it, again, it's okay. It's okay to advocate for yourself. It's okay to go talk to somebody. We have lots of resources in the school. We have outside resources as well. Um, 
because ultimately our job is student learning, right? And to prepare you for life outside of District 127, outside of Grays Lake North. You're not gonna be able to do that if you're not okay, right? You're not gonna be able to learn if you're not okay. Same thing here, we're not able to do our jobs and teach you um, and care for you and care for ourselves and care for our families if we're not okay. So um, I think, like as I said, I'll kind of repeat myself a little bit. If one good thing came out of the pandemic, it's people being upfront about that and really being okay and hopefully taking the stigma a little bit away from mental health issues. It's nothing to be ashamed of. Everybody's going through something. Um, and I think it's really critical that we're okay. And again, to the degree to which people are comfortable speaking about their own mental health, you know, I think that's been really powerful for folks, whether it's you know, people in the media or whomever, your parents or your teachers saying, you know, I, yeah, I, you know, I, I need help. Um, and I have, or I have gotten help, or it's okay. Hey, here's where you can get some help. Um, because again, we want to make. If you're not okay, we can't do our jobs. You can't do your. You can't learn. Um, I'm rambling at this point, but that's about it. Yeah. Well, th thank you, and congratulations on climbing our heat mountain. Yeah, I think. Um, yeah, stacking the five hot sauces kind of addled my brain a little bit there at the end, but that's okay. Thank you for joining me today. Thanks for the invite. And thanks for like five delicious wings. Thanks. And then I'm Levi Adams, and this has been Burning Questions. <laughs>